Oh, the joys of distant selling. I nearly forgot. Where do I sell it? I don't know. eBay. Look at the size of it. Is it upside down? It might be upside down for you. Well, hello and welcome back to my shed here in Norfolk. Good to see you. We start this video with a slightly irritating box. <laughs> Do you remember a week or so back, I was picking a, uh, I was going to say washing machine. It wasn't a washing machine. Come on, brain, think. Sewing machine from where those two board games now sit. And I said to you, I said, the woman started asking questions after buying and paying for the sewing machine. And it, and it got me a little bit worried. We had a conversation and I actually offered at that point for her to cancel because I thought, you seem very unsure about this purchase. And I offered, I said, would you rather just cancel? And she said, no, 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 don't cancel. It's fine. Yes, please send it out. So I did. So I packaged up this great big 12 odd kilo sewing machine, sent it to her. And of course, she returned the damn thing. So I've not opened this box yet. So maybe, should we do that first? Should we do that first and see what's in here? Might be a pile of bricks. <laughs> It's in the same box. It doesn't actually look like it's been opened. Yeah. We shall see. Right. Padding, padding, padding. There's a sewing machine in there. That's a good start. But it seems to have survived its trip wherever it went and back. Pedal. Bag of goodies. Sewing machine. Still in one piece. We will now refund this customer and relist it. That was listed at £60. It actually sold on offer at 50 I will relist it again at the 60 and see if we can sell it again. Oh, the joys of distant selling. Anyway, now that slight irritation is out of the way. Hello, how are you? Hope things are going well. You're on a slight jaunty angle, but hey, it'll do. So I thought we would have a bit of a chat about what's been going on here. Uh, maybe pick some orders. Uh, I have one hello to do. We'll get on to that. Oh, and I want to say hi to Gadget Man. Um, you got in touch with Andrea. You took a shine to this, one of her recent Wittard mug pickups. Um, so we're just going to send it to you um, because you have been so generous to us with, with your gifts, etc. So it's the least we can do. So this rather stunning Wittard mug will be winging its way to you shortly. Um, actually, let's pick the, the order that's going to a viewer first and we'll give a little shout out. Um, I can read the message that came in with the order. It says, hi, Nick and Andrea. We love watching your videos on YouTube. We also love going to charity shops and our local dump shop to find any bargains. Yeah. Tip shops, as, as we call them, can be a good source. There's a pretty good one not far from here. Uh, please give a shout out to my partner, Stu, as this blanket is for him. Thanks, Zoe. Well, hello, Zoe. Thank you very much. And hello to Stu. Um, I need to pick a beach blanket. Now, it's a yellow one. We do three designs of these, actually. One's down here, blue. One's here are like a two-tone thing. And these, here's one that's been opened, are yellow. Here we go. 
Oh, packaging's a bit open on that one. Let's find a sealed one. There we go. So thank you very much, Zoe, and hello, Stu. Enjoy your time on the beach with your new beach blanket. So listing has been going very well recently. You may be aware that I cleared my backlog of unlisted stock recently. Um, and at the end of that, I had a, a, a bunch of just random stuff that I needed to focus on and get it done, including a load of postcards and various other ephemera and stuff, um, including what is here. These are, this is something we used to do way back when we started selling on eBay. These are celebrity clippings packs. It was something Andrea particularly used to do. Um, and we had some left over. These, this stock is like 20 years old. We stopped doing it around the time when we started our first high street shop and we kind of mothballed all of this stuff. We had loads and loads of it. We used to have folders full of this stuff. And uh, yeah, it kind of just got left. And then we got rid of a load of it. We saved some and I've only just got around to looking at it and dealing with it. Anyway, I got it all listed yesterday and we sold one immediately. It is this one. This is a clippings pack. It's all Courtney Love, um, who is the lead singer of Hole. Um, she was the partner of Kurt Cobain. So this is just a collection of articles and stuff from magazines. Uh, listed that yesterday. I was sorely tempted to put it on higher. I ended up going for £25. And maybe I should have gone higher, who knows? I should be pleased with the sale. It's something that we've had for 20 odd years. Anyway, £25. Uh, it's going GSP to the US. Um, so that's a good start. Yes, so I listed four or five different packs of those yesterday. Sold one immediately. So this is all now dealt with. I will perch that up there somewhere. Right, let's do a couple more orders while I've got you. We won't pick everything, um, mostly because I need to get, I need to get a shift on and get all this stuff in the post. Oh, we've sold a really cool little Red Nose Day collectible. Actually, that's another thing I've been listing. I had a couple of big collections of Red Nose Day stuff. I've just gone through all of it and got it all listed. It included this very, it is a rarity. Now, I used to collect Red Nose Day stuff. I cleared my own personal collection over the last couple of years. Um, but I still like buying collections and breaking it down because it's something I know quite a lot about. I know what's rare and what's worth money. So you can see it's all down here. Now, we're looking for bag number four. That's five. This is, can you see, RND4. Red Nose Day 4. In here is a very cool thing. Now, where am I going to set this up? If we come back over here, I might be able to show you it working. Now, this little plastic wind-up monster has sold for 20. It's just a tiny little clockwork plastic toy. But he does work. Let's see if I can show you. bit like that so yeah there you go so he's going out today nice little order 20 pounds uh let's do a couple more oh that's good to see i've only just noticed we've sold some of the classical <laughs> i've got well it's only two lots of classical um vinyl i have listed um i reduced this because it wasn't getting views it certainly wasn't selling it's under here um this came from a jumble sale Okay, I can do it. Hang on. There you go. Uh, I think it's a two or three LP set. Um, I reduced it to 15 to get it gone. Did the trick. So that's nice to see. Inflatable Scrabble has gone. I'll grab that and show you it in a second. 
and let's find that vase what have we got mid-century pressed clear glass vase 21 centimeters what does it look like so ah i think it's behind this one. Oh, that's a beast that's heavy right it's in here oh that's quite a beast as well so that one's gone. I don't think this one had a great deal of value. It's gone on offer at 15 plus posts, so 22 pounds all in. And then inflatable Scrabble. Yeah, I know, the maddest concept. Um, I inflated this. I think I put a picture on my Instagram of it blown up like that. Um, I thought I'd better inflate it because I don't want to send this out and get a return because it leaks, it deflates. So I did actually quickly inflate this. Uh, also, I was then able to get some pictures. So that has gone. Um, was this on offer? I can't remember. It's gone for 20 plus posts, so 27 all in on the inflatable Scrabble. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to uh, quickly get the rest of the orders picked and packed and I'll come back to you and uh, chat about something else. I'm actually still packaging, but I wanted to share this with you. You know when you're packaging and you find a box that fits something perfectly? Well, actually, no. let me show you. The inflatable Scrabble I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I found a box that, that fitted in perfectly? This was exactly the size of that inflatable Scrabble. Although I have had to fold the top in, right, and make a kind of Franken box. But this was exactly the size and shape of that Scrabble, which was really nice. It fits perfectly in there. That's not padded or void filled at all because it fitted exactly. Always satisfying. And the little uh, clockwork thing, if you were wondering, is inside here. He had a lot of void fill around him, but he uh, is safely packed away for his travels. I quickly wanted to uh, share this with you before I package this as well. I didn't pick this earlier, but it's worth sharing. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a little plinth candle holder. I can't remember where we picked this up. Um, we let this go on offer. It's gone grand total $21.99 uh, to include the shipping, um, which was an offer. We are, we are very inclined at the moment to move stuff. You've probably seen uh, the videos done in Andrea's office upstairs in the house. So you know how much stuff we have. So we are very much in the mind to move things so any reasonable offer that comes in at the moment we are tending to take so i just think that is so beautifully made so that is also going out today there you go oh it's just too late <laughs> i just accepted an offer that came in on a cd but i was going to try and get the ka -ching that comes through on my phone on the video but it ka -chinged and then i pressed record Anyway, I've just accepted an offer on a CD. I don't have much at all listed regarding media. Um, this is a CD. It's uh, this one, Dana McVicka. Um, it's sold for like five pounds, but you know, this was part of a, a big stack of 40 odd albums I bought at a jumble sale at 10 pence each. Some of which were, you know, 10, 12, 15 pounds. Uh, the dregs of that are left. So of course I'm just accepting any offer I get in on those. So that's gone. And while I am thinking about music, I'll share what I'm listening to today. So I have a stereo in here and I tend to listen to music all day long. I'm listening to Erasure's amazing 1995 album. This uh, is the expanded reissue version, double disc with loads of rarities and remixes. 
it is brilliant. But I would say that because I'm a huge Erasure fan. Anyway, I'm nearly done with packaging. Um, sorry if you're getting dizzy, I keep moving around. Uh, yeah, just done the pedestal uh, thing I showed you in a big box there. Everything else is pretty much done. You're gonna get all of this label dropped off. Um, and I thought I'd talk through a bag full of stuff I picked up at a jumble sale. I went through it the other night. It's more kind of ephemera and bits of paper and maps and stuff. I took a chance at a jumble sale and I think it's going to work out pretty well. So I'll get everything labelled, dropped off, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Editing Nick here. I just need to apologise for the, the dripping sound you're going to hear in this next clip. I have a toilet in my shed and that was the system refilling. It takes ages <laughs> and it, yeah, I, I didn't realise that noise was going on. Watching the clip back now, yeah, apologies for all the dripping. All the parcels are now dropped off at the post office. I've kind of lost the light though. So I'm going to try putting a light on over there um, so you can see what I'm going to show you a bit more clearly. Let's see what this looks like. It's, <laughs> God, that's bright. I bought a bag, this very bag, at a jumble sale. It says on it, Emergency Planning Society. 10 years, 1993 to 2003. Bag is now empty because I have emptied it of its contents and listed it all. So at the jumble sale, I peeked in this bag and it was all ordnance survey maps. These sort of things. And I could tell that a bunch of them were fairly up to date. Um, I roughly counted them. I thought, oh, there's about 30 maybe in there. She wanted a fiver and I just went for it. I, I bought the bag just based on the fact that I thought there was about 30 Ordnance Survey maps. Some of them looked pretty up to date. There's loads of these Pathfinder ones that are quite popular. So I bought it. Anyway, I have now listed this bundle of maps. They actually turned out to all be Welsh. So maps of places in Wales. So it made a perfect bundle to do them all. Bundle of Ordnance Survey maps as explorers, um, pathfinders and land rangers. And they are listed at £30. I may have to come down on that, but I've gone at 30. I think I put offers on that. But there were some other things in this bag. One of which could be a bit of a gem. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. So as well as the Ordnance Survey maps, there were a few other maps. There was this, which I found fascinating. This is a huge fold out map of the ocean floors. Oh, dropped it. The ocean floors. So like the mid-Atlantic drift and all of that cool stuff. Look at the size of it. Is it upside down? It might be upside down for you. It was. So yes, World Ocean, now I've opened it out. Am I ever gonna get it back together again? Possibly? So there was that, I think this is on. It's not worth much, it's a National Geographic thing, but it's cool as you like. I think this is brilliant. Um, I'm gonna put that to one side and work out how to fold it up in a minute. So there was that, I've listed that for, I can't remember, six or seven quid. Um, there was this, which is uh, a military map. I don't think it's particularly valuable. It's a German uh, manufactured printed map. Um, I've, I've listed it for a tenner. There's this, which is also very fascinating. I don't think I'm gonna unfold this. <laughs> I'll show you a little bit. Um, it shows the D-Day landings in detail. Um, it's a fascinating thing. It folds out similar size to that ocean floors map. Um, couldn't find anything exactly like this. 
I think I've listed that for 20. Who knows if it will sell for 20? We shall see. Then there were some uh, vintage large scale uh, street plans. A couple of Belfast, one of Lincoln, one of Glasgow. Those are all on, not for a great deal, about four pounds each, I think. But you can see it adding up. Then, randomly, in a bag full of what I thought was all maps, was a little small paperback book. Great big lorry going past. Sorry. Uh, of fly tying for the beginner. Uh, so that's gone on for whatever it was, four or five pounds. Then it got a bit stranger in a bag full of maps. There was a load of stamps. Most of these really don't hold much value. It's another great big lorry. What is going on? We're in the middle of nowhere here. I try and feel all the lorries turn up. Yeah, stamps. I have bought and sold stamps on and off over the years. Never done particularly. Oh no, I did do well once. Before I was doing YouTube, I picked up a car boot sale. A box full of a stamp collection. I think it was a family clearing out a relative's possessions or something like that. And they had a, a big cardboard box full of a stamp collection, all in albums and bags of loose stamps, all sorts. I bought the collection and I broke it down. So I sold it. I, I think I did all the albums separately. Just snapped. I think back then you could have 12 pictures on your listing. So I snapped 12 pictures of different pages of the stamps in these albums. Most of them didn't sell for much. I did them all on auction because I had no idea what I had. One of those listings went crazy. So there must have been something special on one of the pages I happened to photograph. One of those albums went up into the hundreds. The others sold for like £20 each or something. I know nothing about stamps, but I did research what I could from these. That's not a penny black, by the way. That's, that's like a commemorative one about the penny black, if you saw that and thought, Nick, there's a penny black. And then these last two items that were in this bag at a jumble sale are really quite interesting. And the last one I think is quite valuable. So this is a scuba diving chart. Like it's a revolving chart to work out dive times and, and this, that and the other. It comes with its instructions and study guide and a couple of other charts that go with it. It's, it's quite old, uh, it's about 20 years old or something, but they do sell. I'm going to try and get £20 for that. Interesting item in my bag of maps. And then the last thing is fascinating. This is a user handbook for radio station UK PRC 320. This is a Ministry of Defence instruction booklet. It's a restricted document. Oh, I hope I don't get into trouble selling this on. I don't think I will, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, yes, September 1975, again, restricted, published under the authority of the Signal Officer in Chief, Army Ministry of Defence. Now, I tried to do my research on this. All I could find was like people selling a modern copy of this, not an original. So well, there might have even been a digital copy, I can't remember. But this is an original. Um, I'll show you what it was. It's like a backpack radio that would have been used, there we go. So in battle, on field, there would have been a a radio operator that would have carried this and used it to communicate. And this is the official MOD instruction book. So the copies of this, the modern reissues of this, people are selling for £20. What does that make this worth? I have no idea. I have listed it and I, I have no idea if I could get this. I've put it on for 50 quid. May never get that ever, but I, 
pretty sure I'll put offers on that. So we'll see if we get any offers come in on this. But yeah, I mean, I'm not fussed because I'm pretty confident in my bundle of Welsh maps to, to make my profit on the bag from a fiver. So everything else that I kept pulling out as I was going through looking at the maps is a bonus. So even if, you know, it's not worth much more than the modern reissues of this and it's only worth £30, that's still pretty good, but we shall see. It's a cool thing. Hopefully there's somebody out there that's a collector of these official Ministry of Defence items, or they have the radio and they would like the official instruction manual. Yeah, anyway, one way or another, we'll hopefully get it sold. So I now need to find a home for these maps and all of the other stuff because it is all listed. Um, we'll perch those up there for now. You may have seen on Instagram, I actually posted a picture of these. I had them all laid out on our kitchen floor. Actually, while we mention Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. I'm still trying very hard to catch up with my wife on Instagram. I've got 6,000 and something followers and she has quite a lot more. So I'm still trying to catch up. So um, yes, I'll bring up on screen here a picture that hopefully will show you what I'm called over there. I think it's just Nick Hill's reseller or something like that. But yeah, I share quite a lot on there these days. Little short videos, pictures of things when I find it, pictures of sales when they come in, that sort of stuff. And a few silly things that make me laugh. But there you go. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you are new here, please subscribe to me. It's completely free to subscribe on YouTube. And I put out several videos every week all about my process of finding stuff, getting it listed for sale on eBay. I nearly forgot. Where do I sell it? I don't know. eBay. And this is how I earn a living. And this is my shed. If you would like to carry on watching me, I'll find the video. I'll go way back when. I've been making videos on here now for, what, seven or eight years. Let's find an old one. Look at me with less grey hair. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.